Okay, so I would just like to make a quick recording about my experience in the court today because I find myself repeating myself a lot. And I would just like to let people know real fast what happened and uh, how we got there. So the day before Jim's naturalization hearing, I heard about it. I had known that he had a naturalization hearing coming up, but I didn't see the order and I didn't know that it was... Um, public like I didn't know that I could do what I ended up doing a reporter I won't name him sent me the full order one day before and when I read it I realized that there was a I don't want to call it a loophole but there was a part of the order that would allow me to go there so it was on such short notice one day before which gave me a dilemma because I knew that I, I, I just felt in my gut that I had to do something to try to slow down this naturalization. I didn't know what was going to happen. I knew that Jim Watkins could show up and he could have brought his two witnesses. And if his lawyer was prepared with all the paperwork, he could have been naturalized right then and there by the honorable court. So I knew that there was a lot riding on this and that nobody else was going to oppose it. So even though I only knew one day before, even though I didn't have an attorney, I felt that something had to be done. Even though the attorney for Mr. Watkins, Leighton Ward Lozada, actually represented me in the past on some matters. I just felt that I needed to do this. So while I was reading the order... I found the sentence that allowed me to do what I what I ended up doing. I found in um, paragraph two where it sets out the location of the naturalization hearing in the regional trial court in the Hall of Justice building on the city hall compound, Pasig City, a Hall of Justice in Tagalog being um, Bulwagan ng Katurungan. So. It says on the original order signed by the Honorable Presiding Judge Rowena de Juan Kinagoran that <clears throat> all interested persons are directed to appear and show cause, if any, why this petition should not be granted. So I read that <laughs> over and over, all interested persons. It doesn't say all interested Filipino citizens. It doesn't say all interested parties. So I realized that using that one sentence in the Honorable Court's um, order, I could insert myself into the case. And so I prayed on it and I tried to figure out what to do and I just knew it was right. So even though I only had a few hours to prepare, the testimony that I ended up giving in court and I didn't have an attorney I ended up doing that so I'll just explain everything that happened um, I woke up very early in the morning 5 30 a.m. and I made my way to the courthouse uh, I called somebody I knew at the PNP who I knew was looking for Jim Watkins and just let them know um, that Jim Watkins was scheduled to appear they did end up sending someone, but as we'll see, Jim Watkins did not appear in court. Um, the journalist who tipped me off also had another journalist there who like, was a local correspondent. He works for a pretty big publication, and they have agreements with other publications who uh, basically have journalists on call around the world. So I made my way to the courthouse and it was really nerve-wracking to be honest um i entered the court building at 7 30 and my eyes were on the lookout for jim for his driver for his wife for the other um person the other witness who was supposed to appear for anybody just related to him that i knew their face i was on the lookout but it quickly we did a flag raising ceremony and it quickly started to become 8 a.m., and then 8.15, and I realized I couldn't wait downstairs anymore. If Jim Watkins wasn't going to appear, I was still going to appear. So, 
And by the way, I don't have like a transcript. I only have my own memory. So this is just my memory of what happened in the court. Uh, just to say that. So I might be a, a bit wrong. I'm just working on memory. I was so nervous and so uh, wired that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I head upstairs in the packed elevator and I make it my way to the to the door. And I photo the door, which I'll use in my tweet later. And I'm just sitting there waiting. And then I see, let's see, I go over to the schedule to see if Jim Watkins is on the schedule. But for some reason, I don't see him. I think I was looking at the wrong one. But then when I turn back around, I see um, the local correspondent who I was scheduled to meet. So I go there, I greet her, and we begin talking about the case, whether or not we think Jim Watkins is going to appear like that. Um, a clerk of the court lets us into the court, um, the courtroom itself, and then I get my first look at the courtroom. It's a very beautiful courtroom. It it's kind of um, it kind of reminds me of ones in the United States. I should mention that it was a childhood dream of mine to be a lawyer. It didn't end up happening, but as a child, one of the many jobs that I wanted to do was to be a lawyer. I also wanted to be a doctor, to be a surgeon, many impossible things. At one point, I even wanted to be a cop. So, yeah, you know how kids are. But one of the things I wanted to do was be a lawyer. So, I have actually, in the United States, sued people before um, on a pro se basis, meaning representing myself. Uh, when I lived in New York, I sued just, it was a very simple case. I just sued a company that did not have a ramp according to the ADA and local New York City codes. They were supposed to have one. I won a default judgment uh, very easy. I didn't need a lawyer. I didn't pay any money for a lawyer. All I paid was the very small court cost to file the lawsuit. And since I won by default, they did actually end up building the ramp. Um, but this case was something totally different than I had ever done before. So I get in the courtroom and it 8.30 strikes. And at first, the people inside the court think that I'm Jim Watkins. They think, because I'm white, they think that I'm the one that's there for naturalization. And I have to explain to them that no, actually, I'm here against the naturalization. And I just keep reading the sentence that I'm using to try to get, to try to insert myself. I just keep reading over and over again that I am a member of the public, I'm an interested person, and I was directed to appear and show cause why the petition should not be granted. And as I am a member of the public that's been directed to appear, I'm appearing on that basis. So I just kept saying that over and over. and. Eventually they got it, and it, it, I remember I, I was getting pretty nervous, but there was a journalist sitting behind me, <laughs> the same one that I entered the court with, like, and I'm just answering her questions, and then pretty soon it's 8.35, and the court's starting, and who do I see? Mr. Leighton Ward Lozada enters, the, who, I, who I'm just going to call him for the rest of this opposing counsel. Um, He's called in the, in the original order the counsel for the petitioner. But he would be my opposing counsel, I suppose. I'm not a lawyer, but um, I pretty much did the job of one today. So the opposing counsel enters, and he's actually, like I said, he, he represented me before on a few things. And he is very, very upset to see me. It's obvious right away. He thinks he, I don't know what he thought. But you can see when he looked at me, his countenance, it looked like he saw a ghost just enter the courtroom. And he asked me what I was doing there. And I told him, I'm here to testify against your client. And <laughs> he told me, T no, today's not a day for testimony. Or you're not testifying today, something like that. And I just answered back, it's up to the judge, isn't it? That did not make him happy at all. He entered like the little annex of the court and he started speaking to the to the people that were gathered there. Um, the OSG office, I don't know what that stands for, but it's a government agency. I think I can find it somewhere, but I'm not going to look at it while I'm recording. But they sent somebody, but none of the other government agencies that were notified sent anyone. 
So <laughs> the judge enters, and um, that's when it starts to really get interesting. So she asks for everybody who's in court today to introduce themselves and what they're there for. And now I really have to figure out if my, if my petition and my legal theory is actually valid. Because I actually, to be quite honest, have no idea if it is. I could have been totally wrong about the legal theory under which I went into court today. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not even a Filipino citizen. I just read the law and I read the paper and I just thought, you know what, I can do this. And I don't know if I'm dumb or if I'm brave or if I'm smart, but that's what I ended up doing. So she asks everybody to introduce themselves. The first one to do it is opposing counsel and then the OSG office. And then there's a bit of confusion whether or not I should introduce myself, but the judge allows it. Now, I printed out a paper, um, which I'll put in the video description and also perhaps on the screen. And I just, I just said, you know, Good morning, Your Honor. I'm a member of the public. In your order, you wrote that all persons that are interested are directed to appear and show cause, if any, why this petition should not be granted. As a member of the public, I wish to show cause on why Mr. Watkins should not be justified, or should not be naturalized. I said something right to that, and I, I said my name, Frederick Brennan, and she allowed me to proceed, and I, I read off my my statement, um, basically the statement just starts with, you know, uh, thank you, Your Honor, and it goes, it goes on and on and on like that. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you, Your Honor, for allowing me to make a statement. Basically, the thrust of it is that I thought, because I, I just looked at the law library, <laughs> like, and this very much annoyed opposing counsel. He hated the fact that I was not a real lawyer but I was acting like a lawyer. He hated it, and it really, I could tell that it really, really annoyed him. At, at one point at the end, you'll, you'll see why I know that. But anyway, the thrust of my argument was that Commonwealth Act 473, which is a law in the Philippines. Um, uh, Filipino law is split between Commonwealth Acts and Republic Acts. A lot of the Commonwealth Acts have been um, uh, they've been repealed because they're from, like, the old Philippine era. But this Commonwealth Act is still in effect. It's been uh, modified a few times, but this section is not. So the act reads that all aliens who want to be Filipino citizens and who apply to be naturalized must be of good moral character and believe in the principles underlying the Philippine Constitution, and must have conducted themselves in a proper and irreproachable manner during the entire period of their residence in the Philippines, in their relation with the constituted government, as well as the community in which they are living. So, a proper and irreproachable manner is where I really thought that I could make a difference. So, I just made a legal argument, and I'll post it, that, you know, due to running HN, a site that is just, you know, I don't have to go through why HN is so awful. You guys know what I think already. Uh, I think HN has served its purpose. Its time is done. The fact that three manifestos were posted there and the administration could not get control of it is proof that it, it, it's, time, it's time to stop. You know, people using HN have gone on to kill over 70 people and it's irresponsible to continue to operate it so uh, other image boards should take its place and I don't feel that Jim Watkins is even competent to run an image board just from my personal experience with him so anyway I make this statement I made this statement to the court and this legal argument and the judge was very gracious she allowed me to read out my entire statement, and after I had read it, she allowed me to submit it to the court as evidence. So I submitted it right then and there, and they gave me a little received stamp. Uh, they were very nice to me. They knew that I wasn't an attorney, and um, the judge, you know, she seemed to accept at least the basis of my legal argument, 
I was added as an opposition to the naturalization, and this infuriated Mr. Lozada. The entire time I was speaking, he was just shaking his head, and he couldn't believe it that um, myself as a non-attorney was being permitted to read this out loud in court. Um, I submitted it, and basically Mr. Lozada then spoke up, and he said, you know, my accusations were baseless and blah 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 you know i don't i don't i, I don't really remember exactly what he said it's probably all on the record but <laughs> he accepted my opposition and it became part of the record at that point so after that mr lazada the opposing counsel um began entering the exhibits but you could tell he was really rattled like he wasn't expecting this today another thing that rattled him was that I'm, I think he might have been expecting his client to show up with the witnesses, but they didn't come. So almost immediately, the um, government employee who, who attended from the OSG, she you know, questioned him as to why Jim Watkins wasn't there for his own naturalization, which is a very good question to ask. You know, you would not expect in the United States to be naturalized without... Um, you would not expect to be naturalized in the United States without appearing to your own hearing. So, I think that Jim Watkins should pay the same respect to the Philippines, and he should treat Filipino citizenship as a great honor. And he's just not doing that. He's just expecting that he can spend money on an attorney and get naturalized without even appearing to his own naturalization. And I think that he just expects that they'll give him a Filipino passport for that. Well, I don't think that's right. I'm married to a Filipina, and... I think that Filipino citizenship is worth so much more than Mr. Watkins is treating it as. So, anyway, m Mr. Lozada starts entering the exhibits, and, you know, you can tell he's rattled. He's just going one by one, um, each exhibit. It's listed in, in the final court order. Um, there's, like, you know, his signature and then proof that they submitted it to the Manila Times. But... One thing that was funny was that <laughs> the opposing counsel forgot one of the exhibits, so that did not make the court happy. He forgot proof that it was, he forgot um, the issue of the official gazette. So according to the law, Jim Watkins was supposed to have submitted his, um, his notice that there was going to be a naturalization hearing in a newspaper where he lives, which he did. He submitted it in the Manila Times. That's how I eventually found out about it, even though it was only the date before. And he also submitted it to um, the official gazette, which is a spe specifically required in the law. But his counsel did not have the copy of the official gazette. So... I, I, you know, I don't, I, I guess I was just expecting his side to be a lot more organized. Um, I'm really glad I attended and gave my, my statement, though, because if he had had that copy, and if Jim would have been there, he could have been naturalized. And that would have been a really, you know, scary situation for the entire world. You know, Mr. Watkins could just basically give up his American citizenship and not be answerable to Congress or the Senator or the house, or anything, and he could just run eight coon with impunity. So I'm very glad that I messed up his, his plan. Um, yeah, opposing counsel did not have the official gazette, <laughs> which was hilarious, by the way. Um, so, you know, the court reprimanded him for that, and already there had to be a reschedule based on two things. Based on the fact that, you know, there was no... Um, official gazette copy which is required under the law and there was n there was no Jim Watkins there were no witnesses it, it, it was you know um, a complete yeah <laughs> anyway so opposing counsel Mr. Lozada he starts talking about me and I can tell it's very obvious you know he had told the court earlier like I said that he of course after I submitted to the court my statement that I read from and my attachments A, B, and C that I refer to in my statement. Um, Mr. Lozada, of course, 
ask the court to be able to respond to my statement, which, of course, the court granted him. I'm not angry about that. Of course, the court should grant him um, that kindness. So, And I look forward to see his replies and submit a reply of my own with an attorney. Um, anyway, so Mr. Mr. Lozada, opposing counsel, submits that statement and you know, a a a asks the court that. But then while the court is writing the order that there's going to be a reschedule, I can see that Mr. Lozada is sitting down and speaking to the OSG attorney, and I didn't think that was fair. I can tell he's speaking about me, calling me a former employee that attacked him on social media. Um, my wife also heard this, so I spoke up and I made an objection that I was being discussed with the attorney for the OSG and I didn't think that was fair because I should also be able to tell my side to that person. Now I don't know if this was right. I'm, I'm doing my best guys. I'm not an attorney. I just felt like he was getting away with you know um, something that he shouldn't be able to. I felt like I had to raise an objection because the court is writing its ruling you know right in front of us. She's got a computer um, the court, you know, uh, the honorable presiding judge has a computer, and she's writing her ruling. The court's writing its ruling, and um, I felt like it wasn't fair that I was being talked about by opposing counsel. So I rose an objection, and I said, you know, opposing counsel is discussing me right in front of the court, and I don't feel that it's fair that I'm not going to be able to give a response to the OSG attorney. So I said something along those lines. Like I said... I was very nervous, and everything is from memory. So I'm not saying that this is a perfect record of what happened in court. It's just my memory. And, you know, throughout everything, um, you know, I'm, I'm whispering with my wife, and I'm whispering, you know, with, with, the, with the reporter. So, like, th there's gaps. So, and then, you know, opposing counsel says that I have no respect for the justice system. <laughs> which is complete nonsense. He says that, you know, it's based, this is how I know that he was very angry because he says, you know, that it's wrong that I'm speaking out of turn. He says that I'm grandstanding. He says that I am speaking without a proper attorney and that I'm not an attorney. He says that I have no respect for the Philippine justice system and don't have like a bar certificate or anything like that. And, um, you know, the judge responds to him and says, and, and you know, the opposing counsel even said that I wasn't a party to the case. Or, I'm sorry, that I wasn't a personality in the case. And luckily, the court defended me. She said that because my opposition had already been accepted by the court, I was now a party to the case. And I actually feature quite prominently on the order, the order that the honorable court gave out. Um, so I am a party to the case, Jim. And I am a party to the case, Mr. Lozado. So, yeah, the court says that, and my final statement in the court to answer the charge of Mr. Lozada was simple. I said out loud in court that I have great respect for the honorable court and the Philippine justice system, and the client of the opposing counsel, Mr. Lozada, does not even have enough respect to appear in the honorable court to his own naturalization, and he does not have, even have enough respect to have his witnesses appear. And that's what I said, you know. Um, the judge, the court, I'm sorry, said after, after I had made that statement that she just basically ordered silence. And that was it. We were done. Uh, the order was released um, uh, like five minutes later, but there was complete silence. You know, Mr. Lozada stopped whispering with the OSG attorney about me. You know, he denies that he was talking about me, but I heard it and so did my wife. Um... Yeah, and I got to make my statement that I respect the the system, and, you know, Jim Watkins did not even respect it enough to appear. So I felt very good about that, and, you know, the order was released, and it was um, delayed all the way until February. You know, the Honorable Court, the only request they made of me was that I, was that I get a licensed Filipino attorney, which I have no problem doing. I have all the way until February to submit a, or to write a statement, which then I can submit to the court, which will lay out proof about why, and more legal arguments with a qualified attorney. 
I'm already looking into retaining a few few attorneys, you know, seeing who would be best for this. Um, and yeah, I, I really, really am glad that I did it. I was scared because I knew that I wasn't a lawyer and I knew that I could mess things up and I knew that things might go so bad that I might even be held in contempt. But I just, I knew that what Jim Watkins was doing was wrong and that he did not deserve Filipino citizenship. I knew it in my heart. And yeah, I I'm just so glad that I, I submitted what I had, even though I only had a day to prepare it. I'm so glad that the Honorable Court accepted it. And I'm so glad that the Honorable Court gave me until February to work on a, a February 3rd, 2020, which is very far away, to work on an even better statement. And Mr. Watkins, I am gonna do everything in my power to stop you from getting the honor of Filipino citizenship. Filipino citizenship is the highest honor in the Philippines and you've done nothing to deserve it but spend money. And I do not think that you are worthy of Filipino citizenship. I don't think you're worthy of the highest honor of this country. And I guess I will see you or your representative in court on February 3rd, 2020. Thank you all for listening and God bless. One thing I'd like to add is that I think what happened in court today was very unusual. I don't think that these naturalization petitions come up very often and I don't think that they're challenged very often because it seemed like what I was doing was not something that happens a lot in the court. You know, even um, my interpretation of what the court was doing when I read off my reason for appearing was, you know, looking back at the previous order to see if that language was really there. I think that the language that I ended up relying on that any interested person can, if they have a reason not to show cause, is kind of like how at a wedding, <laughs> technically anybody that has a reason that the wedding should not happen can stand up, but it's just something that doesn't happen outside of a movie. So yeah, I, I feel like this was something that didn't come up very often. Definitely Attorney Lozada did not expect it, the opposing counsel. And I feel like the court did not expect it either, but um, luckily the court did accept that the language was there and that I was using it properly and I was allowed to submit my statement. Yeah, that's all. That's just something I wanted to add at the end here.